This is the new American media. All right, we're back with Blake, the eccentric Wally. Check him out, eccentricperspective.com, eccentric99 on Twitter. Uh, sign up for his podcast, Eccentric Perspective, on iTunes, and listen to him Monday, Wednesday, Thursday on freedomizerradio.com from noon to 1.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, this is Brian Engelman, your host here on Agree to Disagree here at the thenewamericanmedia.com. Do us a favor, check us out at thenewamericanmedia.com. Search us on Facebook at The New American Media. Find us on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. And subscribe to our YouTube channel page, youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. Where do we want to go from here, Blake? We just talked about the rodeo clowns, and you can hear all of that stuff. It's going to be split up and archived on YouTube and on our homepage and sent out on Twitter. So that's why we're saying stay connected with us so we can follow these stories. Where do you want to go next? I got I, dealer's choice. I'll give it back to you again. I mean, but we got Alex Jones, we got the DHS Militarized Police Force, Ashton Kutcher, the NSA stuff, Egypt, Reggie Love, Michael Hastings. Go. Wow. I know. All right. Well, uh, I know. Well, good. Fine. Just the uh, going by the first story I have on my board here. Yes. Uh, speaking of racism, here we go. We can make the uh, segue here into uh, the Alex Jones is uh, officially. I don't want to say it's official, but he is threatening to. And he says he's about 95% based on his last broadcast of suing MSNBC. WNBC. Uh, yes. Right. MSNBC. <laughs> MSNBC. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, apparently, yes, it's going to be Alex Jones versus Alex Wagner here. So, uh, yeah, MSNBC did a little piece. Uh, now they're trying to switch the narrative of the Boston bombing from uh, them being some sort of radical uh, Islamic uh, group to, uh, to, to them being a basically uh, libertarian and that are inspired by Alex Jones for doing the bombing. And they had a segment featuring uh, good old Mark Potok of the Southern Poverty Law Center, a pretty laughable, buffoonish character. Well, he, he, looks well like another, uh, he looks like a cartoon character, though. He looks like a cartoon character. I caught the... Well, he was, yes, he was with the cartoon character as well, uh, good old uh, former RNC chairman um, Michael Steele. So, uh, yeah, they got together and uh, did a little uh, hit piece. I'll start with this. Uh, MSNBC blames Boston bombing on deeply racist Alex Jones, the Paul Joseph Watson article. MSNBC engaged in one of the most egregious and defamatory hit pieces in its entire history earlier today. This is actually from uh, two days ago, when Alex Wagner and guests all but blamed Alex Jones for the Boston bombings, claiming with no evidence that the Sarnayev brothers were inspired to carry out the attack by the deeply racist Jones and his website. Here's the uh, quote. Alex Jones may sound crazy, but he has 300 million people that have watched him on YouTube. Uh, Alex Wagner is a, uh, says, according to Alex Wagner, characterizing Jones as deeply racist, despite the fact that Jones has preached a message of peaceful, nonviolent inclusiveness for the best part of two decades. And then Michael Steele goes on to say, these folks are getting paid to be racist. <laughs> Remarked, yes, former RNC chairman Michael Steele, as MSNBC showed a screenshot of Infowars.com. Steele went on to claim that only a small percentage of people read Infowars, despite the fact that it gets more web traffic <laughs> than MSNBC.com. <laughs> so, <laughs> neither uh... Steele or Wagner presented a single example of Alex Jones being racist. You know, it's one thing you get up there and you, uh, you know, you maybe make a montage of all the awful racist things that he's been saying over the last 20, you got, you know, 1997, you got almost, you know, 16 years, 17 years of material, and they couldn't come up with one example to show that he was racist. But just, you know, just, uh, that's what, of course, what they're telling their audience. I don't actually know who's, uh, you know, tuning into this stuff. I don't know who goes, uh, you know, do you go on Twitter and go, oh, my God, you got to check out Alex Wagner's show. They're going to have Michael Steele and uh, Mark Potok on. you got to just tell all your friends to tune in. It's going to be some real hard-hitting stuff. But, uh, you know, I guess there are people that do hear this stuff, and it's outright lies. So uh, that's where Alex Jones basically uh, threw down the gauntlet, said that's enough's enough. Because if they're here, I'm going to come up with the uh, statement here. Uh, pretty damning stuff here. So let's let's see how Alex Jones responded 
Uh, I, no, no, no. Maybe... I know. I know how he responded. Yeah. I, I, I'm just. I, I didn't. I didn't see specifically, but I have a hunch. I think he said, "1776 will commence again if you try to take our guns." <laughs> right. I mean, it's like Alex. We're not talking about 17. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Right. Well, that was a, yeah, great uh, highlight of the Piers, the infamous Piers Morgan interview. So uh, Alex Jones is ordering MSNBC publicly to seize and desist, and will also make this clear via registered mail. Jones is also demanding that he'll be allowed to appear on the show in question and defend himself. And here's the uh, statement from Alex Jones. No one should feel safe in this climate. The establishment media can put out whatever lie they want, and the Republican Party, represented on Wagner's show by Michael Steele, will just agree with it because it shows the establishment itself is threatened by the awakening that is happening. They've identified Infowars.com and the journalistic system we're building as a major threat. That's what the MSNBC segment is. It is a premeditated attack. So anyone who supports freedom of the press needs to get behind Infowars.com and all the other alternative media that is under attack, like investigative journalists Glenn Greenwald and whistleblower Edward Snowden and so many others. This is exactly how countries fall to authoritarianism, because if they can intimidate us, shut us down, and defame us, they can defame anybody. And if you care about freedom, and it says, uh, and it goes to the, uh, remember this quote from uh, German pastor Martin, I don't know how to pronounce this, Niemöller, who uh, resisted the Nazis. And Brian, I know we've, we've covered this uh, little poem before. Let it rip. It's a good uh, one. It's a good one. All right. First, they came for the communists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a communist. And then, and this is all about how, uh, you know, how everything unfolded under the Nazi regime. And then they came for the socialists. And I didn't speak out because I wasn't a socialist. So then they came for the trade unionists. And I didn't speak out because, hey, I wasn't a trade unionist. And then they came for the Jews. And I didn't speak out, well, because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for the Catholics. And I didn't speak out, well, because I wasn't a Catholic. But then they came for me. And then there was no one left to speak for me. And it's such a oh. good, that is such a good quote because we, we did a show last week, and you guys can find the archive at thenewamericanmedia.com or on youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia. Blake and I were talking about uh, Dianne Feinstein's uh, the, the media shield laws where she's trying to define what media is. Basically, she's saying, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add, add my little commentary on this uh, and, and just give you the insight, skip all of the verbiage that she used. She's saying that if you're not a paid propagandist approved by the state, then you are dangerous, therefore you're not media, therefore you're not protected, because if we're not controlling the narrative, we're not going to allow you freedom of speech, First Amendment protections. And, and to me, it, Blake, am I off on that analysis? No, right on. Okay, well, that, that, that seems to be exactly what Alex Jones is saying about uh, we are a major threat here at the New American Media. And I, and I, put, I titled that, that, that piece last week, Dianne Feinstein attacks the new American media. They didn't attack me personally. They didn't attack my organization personally. But the new American media isn't me. It's, it's. Well, what did Eminem say? Because there's a million others just like me who dress like me, who just don't give a something like me, walk, talk, and act like me, and just might be the next best thing, but not quite me. And, and that's what the new American media is. There's a million others just like me. This is the new American media. We are standing up and we're saying enough with the spoon-fed propaganda. We know the difference. You guys are shielding garbage. The corruption is running rampant. The credit card is going bankrupt. Nobody's fighting for the little guy. Nobody's fighting for the middle-of-the-road guy. Everyone's being pitted against each other. This whole system is being intentionally destroyed. And we're watching it happen. And you clowns that are running the media and running certain aspects of the government you are the problem so they are turning on t not not turning <laughs> not turning on like a but i mean they are turning and attacking the new american media whether it's infowars the new american media.com freedomizer radio across the board they're attacking us because they can't control us and you're seeing it run rampant i love it i love it yeah, so uh, and if, uh, Alex Jones is basically stopping them from setting a precedent here because if they're going to abs if they're going to get away with these kinds of bold lies, then where does it end? So just to uh, finish up here on his last uh, paragraph of his statement here, he says, so uh, this meets the precise definition of willful, conscious defamation with malice of forethought with intent to do harm. He says, I have sued people before for defamation successfully. I don't like to do this. But clearly, if I don't respond to this, they will make up even more outrageous stuff. 
Will I be a child molester tomorrow? Will they say I'm, I'm the bomber? They're already saying I made people bomb stuff and I'm deeply racist without showing a shred of proof. This is outrageous authoritarianism, so I am putting them on notice. I want massive retractions right now, and this is your tort warning. You are now on notice. Do you guys think you're invincible because you have the White House behind you? Richard Nixon thought he was invincible, too. The American people are going to stand up against this intimidation against the press. So, uh, yeah, quite the uh, bombshell stuff. So uh, well, I'll tell you what, Blake, that, that leads me into two different segues. Yeah. We can take it. Uh, intimidation of the press, we could touch on the Michael Hastings CIA and FBI information, or we could veer uh, along the racist route, the black and the white thing, and talk about Matt Damon's BET interview in the National Black Republican Association calling for impeachment of President Barack Obama. Which direction do we want to steer the car? All right, well, let's take it real quick to the uh, intimidation against the press, because yeah, you know, let's, let's just work let's, let's just that, work that be, one yeah. in here. Real quick be, one. Yeah, because yeah, this works. One. It yeah. doesn't have to be focused. But uh, Michael Hastings, of course, one of his final interviews was talking about, you know, standing up for, you know, the press and standing up to this, you know, intimidation against the press uh, in light of how, uh, you know, the Justice Department has been snooping on AP reporters, uh, snooping on, of course, uh, James Rosen of, of Fox News, and the way that they've paid a chilling effect on investigative journalists with the NSA looking at basically everything. Uh, and he was saying, oh, we've we got to come out with all this uh, information now. You know, it's time to fight back. And he was on the Young Turks uh, doing a couple of uh, interesting uh, interviews about that just before he uh, mysteriously died in a one-car accident. And there's been a gag order out. Uh, the, the LAPD and everything has not been able to talk about it. The FBI has said that they had nothing to do with it. And he, of course... Uh, he, he sent out reports. Uh, he was working on the biggest story ever, and uh, he was telling his friends that he had to go into hiding because it was such a big story. And then, boom, his car just uh, totally explodes under the most uh, mysterious of circumstances. And then I believe he so, was uh, cremated without without approval or consent from the family. Right. Yep. There's uh, all kinds of uh, weird uh, problems with this uh, story. So, here. so what was going on with Hastings, though? That, 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 that how does the CIA and FBI? How do these two components work into this here? As we talk about intimidation right. of the press. Well, there's uh, yeah, there's two uh, articles I found uh, just just out of this week here. Um, that uh, one, the FBI has now admitted it has documents on Michael Hastings after they had initially denied it. So the FBI has uh, tacitly uh, admitted that it possesses documents pertaining to Michael Hastings, despite initially claiming that it had never investigated the Rolling Stone journalist who complained of being under scrutiny by the federal agency in the hours before his death. So uh, let's just say here, there's a quote here, the Department of Justice has indicated that the FBI has likely located responsive records pertaining to investigative journalist Michael Hastings, who died in a tragic car accident in L.A. in June, and the agency expects to finish processing the records in about three weeks, reports uh, Jason Leopold, who filed along with uh, Ryan Shapiro a uh, Freedom of Information Act request with the FBI in an attempt to obtain any record on the uh, federal agency held on the reporter. So, uh, and also briefly, we also have found out that uh, it was... Wait, wait, but before you get into the next component, I just want to clear up. Uh, I'm going to play the role of MSNBC real quick. MSNBC! Yeah. Uh, I want to play the role of them real quick, if I could. Um, was Michael Hastings a racist libertarian? Right. Libertarian. What can you tell me about that? Oh, I thought you were going to play a clip on that. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> um, well, I, he must be. If he's uh, criticizing anything about Obama, then he clearly the only reason for that is because he is a you know he's deeply racist. Oh, okay. Just making sure we had that clear. Anyway, I, I, I disrupted your your Hastings stuff. You had some <laughs> Sorry, FBI. I thought you were going to throw a clip up there. But uh, <laughs> yes, one of the other things we didn't know about was uh, what was he working on? It was going to be the biggest story ever, rumored to be the CIA. And uh, it, it has come out that journalist Michael Hastings was investigating CIA director John Brennan before his untimely death in a suspicious car accident. It has been revealed, and uh, the report is set to be published uh, by Rolling Stone magazine within the next two weeks. Wow, that's wow. a credible publication, especially after putting Sarnayev on the cover. Fantastic, guys. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to pay attention to what you say about Hastings now. Good work. Good work. It's tough to say. They're actually, uh, to be fair, tough to uh, say. Michael Hastings was, uh, yes, his big story.
story about General McChrystal, where he did take down General McChrystal, was done through Rolling Stone, and he also admitted in one of his interviews with the Young Turks that uh, he would not have been able to make that story had he been working under uh, Newsweek, which he was a former employee of. So, yeah, the, uh, we can get into the whole uh, problem with the, uh, the, the cover of the Rolling Stone article, but Rolling Stone does do some good investigative journalism, and uh, uh, also uh, Matt Taibbi of uh, Rolling Stone has done some uh, fantastic work uh, exposing all of the corruption on Wall Street and within the Federal Reserve. So i got to give some, some kudos. Even all though, right. You know, all right. Well, despite well, the, uh, yeah, the Rolling Stone cover. I, th- I, th- I think in, the, in, in honor of the name of our program today, we can agree to disagree on Rolling Stone for just a minute because our, Fair we're, enough. we're a little bit sh- crunched on time and we have quite a few other interesting things we want to cover here on Agree to Disagree. Uh, check out the homepage, thenewamericamedia.com. We're going to take a brief pause, brief time out. We're going to come back. I, I want to kind of wrap this up, get, get rid of all this final racist stuff and, and, and all these things because – you know, we're talking about the NSA and the illegal spying and then the, the rodeo clown and then Alex Jones being called racist. And, and there's a story about the National Black Republican Association calling for impeachment of President Obama, who is half white and half black. And then in a Matt Damon BET, Black Entertainment Television, I couldn't imagine a wet television channel, Blake. I couldn't imagine white entertainment television. Could you imagine the outcome? Anyway, I, it's just the absurdity of everything being about race all the time. Anyway, I, I want to wrap this up because Matt Damon, he's a guy I love like some of his work. I want to play you something he said in, from Goodwill Hunting, and then I want to play for you what he just said about President Obama. He is a, a, a classic Hollywood liberal who is, who is, well, I mean, liberals, he's, he was a strong supporter of the president. You might be shocked to hear what he said recently. We'll pause for brief station identification here on the TNAM Radio Network, and we'll be right back with Blake the Eccentric Wally and myself, Brian Engelman, here on the New American Media.com. You are listening to the New American Media. 